Welcome to the special video series, Future Focus, brought to you by ICICI Lombard. In this very first episode, we have with us Girish Nayak, Chief of Service, Technology and Operations at ICICI Lombard. He's going to share with us his expert views on how to run a smooth ship during the pandemic and also why digital services are important during these trying times. Welcome to the show, Girish. Thank you, Vishal. Can you please tell us how ICICI Lombard is using technology to serve customers? This whole uh, scenario due to the uh, pandemic lockdown is uh, quite unique. Uh, I don't think any organization, uh, in spite of uh, very well-written BCP policies and uh, what have you, ever wrote a scenario where uh, all the premises would be available, but human agents would not be able to access any premise. So typically BCP scenarios uh, look at a situation where one premises is uh, out of reach or destroyed or a data center is out of uh, commission or whole lot of situations where one doesn't kind of expect that everything is remote. And uh, but what also, uh, uh, I mean, uh, what has helped is in having the BCP is though it did not envisage the scenario, it did envisage a set of protocols we followed when a crisis uh, uh, is noticed. And that is what helped us through in uh, very swiftly responding to the whole uh, scenario as it panned out. Uh, we uh, immediately, I mean, when we had the first sense of uh, something like this uh, uh, coming, we immediately uh, sent almost 50% of our staff to work from home across the country. Uh, we also uh, fortunately were able to order some additional laptops and got them delivered just before and as the countrywide lockdown hit. So uh, a few more of the staff who needed to be enabled uh, to work from home uh, could be given uh, the laptops. Uh, so uh, in a sense, we could have a good proportion of our uh, uh, staff to be enabled to directly work from home with laptops and uh, using either VPN uh, or uh, internet facing applications uh, as the case may be with uh, the appropriate security uh, functionality involved to uh, work from home. Uh, if, uh, regarding our uh, partners and we have a huge uh, agent network and uh, other distribution channel. So there uh, we have been uh, over the period of time, digitizing uh, a whole lot of functionality out there. And that stood us in good stead at this point in time where most of our operations with our agents, though uh, we are not able to physically move any paper, are uh, we are able to do that digitally. So whether it is through uh, the uh, agent portal that we have given them or through a mobile app or through uh, an email bot that uh, is used, especially in our uh, SME business. So there are various tools that agents have at their uh, fingertips to kind of uh, communicate with us digitally, to process information digitally, to issue policies digitally. So that has helped us in good stead to uh, uh, manage this whole uh, uh, scenario in the pandemic without having to actually access our offices. And finally, the customers always have our uh, website if they want to directly access and purchase policies uh, on the website or uh, through the uh, mobile app. Uh, and uh, that has been working uh, constantly through this period. And uh, uh, finally, the call center, uh, we uh, have an in-house call center. And again, we were able to get uh, a significant amount of call center capacity also working from home uh, right from day one. Uh, so that has helped service the, because uh, one important part of the uh, entire uh, operation is the claim service. And especially at a time like this, when people require uh, access for health claims, that we had to keep that uh, up and running constant. So our uh, health claim processing, which is our, uh, because we have in-house TPA as well, which processes the health claims, as well as uh, the call center, we were able to get functioning on day one of the lockdown from home. So that uh, that process also went on uh, uninterrupted. So we've been kind of uh, because of our huge investment in uh, digitization and automation, uh, we have been able to get all uh, constants of whether it is uh, the employees, the uh, partner network or the customers 
uh, kind of move uh, seamlessly to this uh, lockdown scenario that uh, we have been uh, under for the last month or so. Okay, and uh, talk to us about some of your CRM initiatives. Uh, what measures have you taken to improve the ex experience? You spoke about digital, uh, you know, where apps, people use apps, there must be a certain spike at this point of time. Uh, talk about your experience in terms of, uh, you know, how much how much of these customers are coming online today and why? Yeah, like I said, uh, see, there are, there are certain sections of the customers who comes online, they have been coming online, that has increased, but uh, really where uh, our uh, greater this has been is trying to get our agency network uh, completely uh, so uh, and we have different solutions for different uh, uh, kinds of uh, the, the agents who primarily uh, do uh, the motor business there it's largely through a, a, a portal uh, which we call iPartner where they have all the functionality that they require including if they need to have some special approvals everything is kind of put in that one portal, that's one place where they go and they can issue policies uh, immediately to the customer. Uh, they can, uh, and in this situation where they're not able to uh, interact with the customer directly, uh, they also have to uh, work from their home. They are able to uh, talk to the customer on phone, send a, uh, fill in the policy to send a payment link to the customer so the customer can make the payment on uh, his or her device and uh, the policy gets issued and sent to the customer. Same is the case in uh, for health uh, business. There, uh, the agents are more comfortable because uh, of the different nature of that. Uh, they are more comfortable doing the business uh, uh, from mobile. So we have a complete mobile app which they have, and the entire everything can be done. You know, onboarding of customers can be done completely from the uh, mobile app. I uh, did mention that we have an email bot for our SME customers, yeah. SME agents. And that again is a different solution because there uh, it's not a it's not an individual selling it's selling to a, a small and medium yeah. enterprise. Yes. And typically the sale is a bit more complex because it's, the product is not a simple motor product or health product. It's a, a fire and burglary uh, or uh, yeah, sometimes even more complex. So there they yeah. tend to be sitting across the uh, uh, customer at most of the times here in this situation they'll be calling the customer and it's a bit of a complex uh, form to fill so instead of having a, a web app or a, or a web a web screen or a uh, app to fill uh, the easiest thing for the person to do is fill in the email first so what we have done is just he fills the details required uh, for the quote on the email uh, and sends it to a particular email id there's a bot which picks up the mail understands right. what uh, policies required, goes to the relevant system, picks out the quote and sends it across on the mail. This all happens in five minutes. So the agent is again, uh, as he's sitting across, he gets a mail saying that, okay, this is the quote. He can uh, then discuss it with the uh, uh, customer. And if the customer is okay, then uh, all he needs to do is put the check number and uh, just send the uh, email back. A policy is issued within minutes and sent back. So all this happens completely on email. It's the most, uh, simple interface uh, as you might say uh, for uh, uh, doing a complex uh, piece of uh, this like a SME policy. So there are multiple uh, ways of uh, addressing the same need and that is basically the customers need to get a policy issue that we have been able to uh, fulfill through uh, our various tools that we have provided them. Okay, because we're also about future focus, you know, the world is about data. There's a lot of data that obviously as an insurer you generate. Is there a role of AI and machine learning at this point of time for general insurance, non-life insurance? Oh, definitely. I mean, uh, as uh, someone said, insurance is originally data industry, right? It's uh, it was the industry which started working on data. The whole actu actuarial tables and actuarial everything. science. Yeah, yes. it came from the insurance industry. But uh, frankly, I mean, uh, for all the data that uh, insurance uh, actuaries use. The insurance industry has been uh, a late entrant into the uh, AI uh, ML uh, field. So we have uh, had a few initial uh, the last uh, uh, say year and a half. We have been uh, working on uh, AI ML and we have a couple of uh, things which are already in production, which use the AI tools we have developed uh, in house. One is uh, the uh, break-in inspection using AI. 
So mm -hmm. when uh, in a motor policy, uh, your motor policy lapses, you have not renewed it in time. So uh, if you go for reissuance of policy, typically if someone will tell you that we have to come and see your vehicle so that in the interim yes. three or four days you have gone and uh, had an accident which you want, uh, which uh, you don't want to have. So uh, there, instead of someone coming and visiting you, which can take up to uh, maybe 48 to 72 hours after you intimate the company, uh, what we have done is given you a uh, insuspect in tool which is on your mobile. You can. Mm -hmm. You, all you need to do is take photographs of the vehicle. Uh, there is a, a kind of a skeleton given which you, which angles you have to take the photograph. And once you take the photographs, you upload the photographs. Uh, it takes about 10 minutes to take the photographs uh, from all angles. Right. Then uh, you upload the photograph. And within about a couple of minutes, you get, if there is no dent on your vehicle, you will get an approval saying that, okay, you can uh, pay like whatever the policy amount and your policy is issued. So it doesn't need a further inspection for your trans. There's an AI which is uh, figuring out uh, whether there's any dent or there's any scratch on your vehicle. If there's a small scratch, it's kind of, uh, it, it ignores that. Uh, if the, uh, the flip side is if there is a dent, uh, while the AI can reject it right now, but uh, we don't kind of uh, allow the AI to reject it. We just send it to a manual uh, so okay. can, yeah. uh, a person who can inspect the photograph and say, yes, there is a dent which we don't want to. Uh, either you repair the dent or you exclude the dent from your policy. Right. That discuss. So we don't. Uh, the, uh, see, again, with AI, you need to realize one thing. I mean, right now uh, in uh, in the early stages, uh, you want to use it to benefit the customer. Say, okay, uh -huh. I'll speed up the customer, but. If there is some negative distance that AI has to take, you'd rather let a human take it. Yes. Uh, with because we are still more comfortable with human judgment. Uh, and it's a blended model that you follow there. It's a blended yeah, in the sense that AI. rejects have to be rejected by a human. Uh, okay. Uh, acceptance can be done by AI. The rejection has to be done by a human. So e even in case of uh, uh, medical cashless. For uh, corporate business, uh, for the corporate uh, health policies, we uh, for the cashless claims. Uh, again, we have AI looking at the uh, so when you go to the hospital, the doctor kind of fills out your diagnosis. They uh, uh, say you have uh, X, Y, Z, uh, this, and then this is the uh, time you need to stay in the hospital. This is the room, blah, blah, blah. And you take that along with your policy. You go to TPA desk and you fill out your forms and give it there. Uh, typically, it'll take about two to four hours if you're lucky and uh, sometimes it can take uh, quite long to get uh, that uh, approval passed, right uh, there again we are using AI uh, and here the AI is kind of reading what the doctor has written uh, of course typed out is not written otherwise AI won't ever be able to figure out what absolutely. it is yeah, absolutely yeah and but it's typed out unstructured right the doctor is using its own uh, their own uh, language uh, abbreviations everything which is uh, which a typical, it, it's not none, nothing codified. In the US, if you go, there is a proper uh, ICD-10 codification for uh, every kind of uh, this. So, it, so when a particular code is given, you know exactly what is the treatment process to be followed. So here it's just mm, five or six sentences of what it is, and you have to make sense of. So the AI is actually reading that and trying to figure out whether it fits into policy terms and conditions. So no, no, it's a, Girish, is this a new normal? Is this a new normal that uh, Ind Indians have to get used to? There is going to be AI going forward, and this pandemic has only sped up our usage of these technologies. Do you see even your channel partners use it, uh, and even you know the entire chain of hospitals maybe? Uh, what, do, what is your opinion? Yeah, I, I would say that uh, this would be the new normal. There would be more and more uh, AI, robotics, and uh, stuff coming in. For example, uh, uh, I have been reading uh, uh, articles on how the entire uh, uh, BPO industry is uh, coming to terms with uh, uh, having this whole work from home thrust upon them. And a lot of it has to do with uh, automation and bots which come to their uh, help in trying to get uh, doing the simple tasks which uh, humans can do, uh, automate them further. And a lot of that because uh, of the improvements in natural language processing, uh, which are there today, uh, can be accomplished by bots. Interesting, interesting answer. And But uh, this behavioral change in teams, uh, do you see yourself asking them to reskill themselves? Or is this bot, as you said, it's going to assist a channel, assist an agent, right? 
So it will be more intuitive learning rather than reskilling. Uh, well, uh, let me uh, put it this way: in uh, uh, at least in our business, and I would say this will largely hold true for a uh, economy like India, uh, yes. as compared to uh, say a Western developed economy. Uh, we are still uh, growing, and the I mean, forget the temporary uh, setback that this pandemic is. Uh, but in, in general, we are growing. We are uh, we are still uh, developing. Uh, this. And you know, when your business is grow, helps you to do is manage. Uh, for example, the stuff that I spoke of, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we actually have doctors uh, on our roles who are in our uh, claim processing center who are actually reading the doc diagnosis written by a doctor and then determining mm -hmm. whether this is. So now the AI is doing a part of the work the doctor can do for simple cases. Uh, AI just uh, today, even today, it. Uh, does about 45% of the uh, cashless for corporate uh, health right. policies uh, in a straight through mode. The remaining 55% still goes to doctors. But over the last year, my claims would have increased, but I would not have had to increase my workforce for handling those things because the doctors can now look at the more complex claims, whereas the more simple claims are handled by the AI. So it, it, it helps you to utilize your workforce much better than uh, I mean, for a doctor to read a simple uh, maternity claim and spend time on that, no, it's it's something that should go straight through. But if there's a, a comorbidity uh, claim by the uh, someone has malaria and typhoid, and then you're trying to figure out what is the claim, that is something which AI will, at least in the current context, may not be able to do. Because okay. A, there's not enough data on such cases that is there for the past to kind of uh, predict the future. Okay. And you would want to put some human intelligence into trying to estimate what that uh, amount is. And so here you can kind of please segregate the more complex tasks which uh, a human would want to handle and let AI handle uh, something which is routine and uh, uh, regular in nature. Okay. How tough was it uh, for you to get this behavior change from channel partners when you went through this process of digital transformation? Uh, was it easy for you? Did you sit them down and say, okay, this is our, our way forward in the future. We're going to be using AI. We're going to be using a lot of data. It is only going to help you. Do you want to talk about that digital transformation side that you uh, enable them to be part of? Yeah, so any digital, any change has to be thought through. It has, uh, you have to kind of uh, do a lot of communication. You have to do a lot of uh, change management because mm -hmm. it's, just not easy throwing a digital solution at someone and saying that, okay, use it because there are going to be a lot of uh, uh, issues that, I mean, if someone doesn't want to use something, you just <laughs> raise 10 issues and say it doesn't work, right? It's, it's, it's Absolutely. Very <laughs> Blame the system, yes. Yeah. So, uh, so a lot of that also comes with uh, what are the incentives you, uh, and incentives can be overt, they can be uh, hidden because, uh, for example, uh, something like uh, the email bot I talked about. Well, uh -huh. it didn't really have to do with incentive because what was the alternative? Why did we go for the email solution? Uh, and I'll just step back a bit to tell you how this whole thing came about. Because uh, three, four years back when we said we have to concentrate on the SME uh, business and we really don't have any kind of uh, market share worth talking about in the SME business and we need to address that. Uh, one of the first things the team on the ground came back and said, look, uh, the PSUs have a stranglehold on this business. And the reason they have stranglehold is that this whole market is not in the big cities. It is in the tier two, no, no. tier three. And so there, there's a huge branch network that the PSUs have. And there it is, and each development officer is the underwriter themselves. They, they are kind of taking the distance <laughs> out there on the spot locally. In our case, everything is centralized or at least in hubs. So for for any decision underwriting, this information has to come back sent to the center. Some underwriter is going to put that. I mean, the, he'll have multiple uh, stuff out there. So it might take a day. It might take two days. It might take three days for the underwriter to revert. And then by that time, the agent on the field has lost the case because there's, there's always competition out there. Who uh, the uh, if they are able to address the need fast, it good. Now what happens when you uh, automate it, put it on email and within five minutes, the agent is able to get the answer. So you really don't need Absolutely. to incentivize him further to get to that. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. And what about, uh, you know, there's a lot of fraud that, that happens in insurance, uh, starting from the payment side to identity theft to, you know, to people stealing information. Can AI detect uh, fraud in insurance? Yeah, definitely. I mean, there, there is a lot of uh, stuff that AI can do in uh, fraud management. We are just at Tysis number, we're barely starting our journey there. Uh, we've uh, earlier uh, for fraud detection, we used to have uh, risk based models where, based on past claim data, we used to kind of uh, have a model which uh, then looked at uh, claims coming in and used to flag off claims based on certain triggers, right? Say X hospital, Y disease. Uh, um, uh, this amount of claim could be a possible fraud. Please trigger an investigation. Now, uh, same thing we have now replaced with a AI. And what is the advantage of AI? The model is dynamic, so it's not a uh, static model. In the risk-based model, typically every quarter you take the data out, kind of analyze it, then reset your triggers and that goes here ai is more dynamic because it's running on a constant feedback loop as the yeah. cases come and as the cases get triggered and you get a feedback that this trigger is correct the ai improves itself so that we've already uh, put that uh, for triggering uh, in our health claims uh, portfolio uh, we uh, set off triggers using ai and uh, over last uh, maybe about five, six months now, uh, we've already managed to bring it uh, to uh, same level of efficiency as our uh, current uh, risk-based model, uh, trigger model is. So, so it's more prescriptive today or predictive, your model? So it's more uh, predictive. It's it's kind of trying to predict that this will be a likely fraud. So we anyway have to investigate the fraud in detail. It's just not based on AI prediction that we can do, but it is trying to predict that it's trying to make our investigation more. Uh, see, the way we'll measure success of it is that I the more positive investigations I do. Okay, great. You know, I want to I want you to quickly talk, talk about cybersecurity. Also, the world is moving digital. Digital transformation is real. Everybody is now setting objectives to digital transformation, but we need to understand risk better. There's so many security products out there. Mill I mean, thousands of tools. I mean, in fact, running into hundreds of thousands. For you, as a you know, as a person who understands tech, how tough is it for you to understand this subject and home in on uh, the right approach to cybersecurity? No, definitely. I mean, cybersecurity is something that uh, we need to pay very, very uh, uh, minute attention to, especially uh, when we are now uh, in a completely different environment from where we are. see in a in a kind of office environment. It's it's a kind of uh, uh, I would say uh, sterile environment. You try and create a sterile Absolutely. environment where uh, people can work from. When suddenly everyone is working from home, you're you've gone completely outside your sterile environment. You kind of need to yeah. manage that whole uh, process. And uh, there are tools out there which we are also using to uh, uh, provide uh, this uh, cyber security uh, protection to uh, our environment. And uh, but I think. Uh, while tools are uh, required and you need to put all that in place, uh, a key thing in cybersecurity is in terms of educating your workforce. I mean, that is uh, that is the importance of that cannot be uh, understood yeah. because uh, more breaches happen due to uh, 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 some in a, uh, internal uh, employee getting fished or uh, some social engineering done on an employee employee and his password getting compromised than actually some breach in the firewall. Of course, breach in firewalls happen, but it's more the more of the attacks have been by uh, inter in, uh, internet, right? So yes. you need to keep educating your employees. You need to keep send and uh, especially in cyber, we almost send almost every day. We send a different kind of cyber cyber security message to employees saying that to, this these are the and it is true that uh, due to the COVID. Uh, 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 related information that is out there. A lot of people have registered websites for COVID-19 and similar this and they're trying to do uh, various kind of phishing attacks. We need to keep educating employees not only on this, but also so we, we regularly run uh, anti-phishing campaigns on employees. So basically anyone who gets phished by that uh, campaign has to go through a e-learning module on uh, how not to get phished. So those uh, more and more you run all these awareness. Uh, this, so you hope that uh, you are better prepared uh, to ward off because your first line of defense is actually your employees. 
they have uh, the more efficient they are they are uh, you are able to uh, resist uh, attacks better okay my final two questions uh, you know do you see a convergence of uh, your ai and data science teams and actuarial teams you know along with your products team where you can create data led products that are even more superior post the covid world uh in a way yes i mean uh, because uh, in some of the uh, products that we have filed uh, in the regulatory sandbox as well uh, we are trying to test out uh, these ideas uh, in terms of the uh, uh, the products on especially using telematics and motor insurance and stuff there uh, where uh, the data science team works along with the product team and actuarial team to design a product uh which can be uh, uh giving the customer insurance on base of how how he drives or how much he drives so those are products which we are testing out in the irdi sandbox uh, nice model. nice so i look forward to more of such products my final question is your employees you know all of our employees look for answers uh, you're a leader uh, how does a technology officer communicate uh, ideas to the teams out there in icic lombard what type of policies have you brought in uh, during this pandemic uh, you know any thoughts on them well uh, one thing we first thing we did is uh, update our work from home policy to ensure that uh, people working from home have uh, 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 a good idea of what they need to do uh, what precautions do they need to take while working from home because uh, that was an environment completely new for all of them uh plus providing them tools uh, for collaboration uh, across because uh, when everyone is stuck at their homes uh, but you still have to collaborate on various uh, had uh, doing presentations together or working on document together how do you use uh, tools which are then those tools are made up of employees and of course uh, uh, video conferencing and stuff like that to uh, keep in touch so all that has been uh, kind of put together to enable employees to uh, uh, work as seamlessly as possible without uh, physically interacting with each other uh, it, it has uh, uh, based on feedback that we get worked out Uh, quite well so far even employees who haven't been uh, who were in the initial lot did not get uh, laptops have now been enabled to work uh, using telephones and their mobile phone so to that extent we tried to uh, reach out to as many employees as possible and uh, have tried to keep them engaged through this whole uh, great process great answers uh, you know you have the toughest job possible but also a beautiful job because the future is about data and using ai to predict and prescript how humans can live better uh, girish thank you very much for being on the first episode of uh, future focus you're amazing and i wish to see you on the other side of the lockdowns stay safe thank you vishal stay safe thank you, you.